Okay, you guys ready? Parthenogenesis. His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. Um, guys, I think I'm kind of getting, uh, <laughs> just turned around on which video I just recently did. But you remember the two girls dressed as vaginas that said uh, their uh, costumes were um, from the beginning of time. How long did it take you to make your costume? Remember that? Since the beginning of time. Okay, yeah. Because it is a costume. The host body is a costume. What's really going on is behind the scenes. Let me show you something. I mean, just right now. I, 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 <laughs> gotta, you got to watch how you do things these days. It's so, it's so whacked out. Let me just show you. This is a real article. This is real. But being here at this channel, and you know now, Parthenogenesis, it was a reptilian race. And that's why the Vatican is a snake. That's why the building next to it, alongside of it, is a snake. Audience hall. They're both snakes. Why? Well, if you were the ones responsible for Parthenogenesis, which is what a reptilian race can do to get things going, self-fertilize, then transgender and start interbreeding with yourselves in order to create your race. That is a reptilian uh, trait as well as insects. Okay, I've shown you that. This is biological facts. Komodo dragons, whiptail lizards, salamanders, frogs, and a variety of insects are capable of parthenogenesis. Isn't it odd? All the stuff I show you regarding insects when it comes to religion, altars. I mean, isn't it interesting that in the end of the world, the pit opens up and what comes out of the pit? Insects. So if you made the system, so if you created the system as a trap, a snare to catch angels that were doing the wrong thing, it would make sense that at the end, your race takes over, wouldn't it, since you started it? Okay, let me show you an article, and then I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm gonna start doing, uh, on another channel, some shorty videos, just short ones, just little, little fillers. Let, let me explain why. So, when I do these videos, right, it takes four to six hours if I do a two-hour two hour video because I got to come out here. I got to set up the desktop. Then I do the video hour, two hours. Then I have to sit here while it renders and then I have to load it on YouTube. So that whole time I'm just sitting here making sure it gets up, that it gets out because um, I have to switch it from different platforms. It has to go from the rendering uh, after that's done, then it has to go into the YouTube upload, and then I have to wait till it's uploaded. And then once it's uploaded successfully, then I go, okay, everyone got it, then I'll, I'll go to bed. Sometimes that gets very late. But my time could be being used even more efficiently. So I'm going to start during, I'm going to start uploading shorter videos on another channel. It's all going to be shorties, just shorties. And so let me show you where that's going to be right here. Watch this. So let's see right here. Um, this is this is the channel right here. I'm going to sh show you right here. Let me go backwards. This so right here you can type this into into uh, the YouTube search. This is the channel right here. It says Susan Harless, and um. She's got some of my stuff already posted. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uploading and putting very short videos on her channel. What's really weird is this kind of came about today as, an, as a way to... Hang on one sec, guys. I'm having a little trouble getting out of this. Hang on one sec. Ah, what's going on? As a way to stay busy while everything's uploading, I can go and put up some shorties while I'm waiting for everything to render. You know, I could be doing three or four little shorties on just bullet points for people. Anyway, so I thought it was a really good idea. So 
Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do a little article that's in the New York Post. And by the way, this is real. I'm not joking. This is not a spoof. It's real. Don't forget the whole transgender and parthenogenesis. The most masculine thing you can do is to give birth, to actually give birth. But let me show you what they're talking about. This is the transgender man gives birth after grinder one night stand while transitioning. Okay. So transgender man is sharing his unplanned pregnancy journey after getting knocked up from a grinder one night stand. That's lovely. Ask Patrick Shade, 28. You know what? This has all the markings of that vocabulary that, and that language that I've gotten really good at reading. This is starting to look very suspicious. Anyway, Ash Patrick Shade, 28, was two years into his transition when he became pregnant in February of 2020. Following a date with a man on Grinder, despite the fact the health worker, healthcare worker, and the PhD student was taking male hormones blockers at the time. So I just I don't even know what to say except here's the article, and here it is, and you can go read it for yourself. But it's just. You know, it's just where we're at right now. So type it into Google. You can go type in New York Post, uh, transgender man shares his journey, whatever. Gives birth. Transgender man gives birth. Okay, so, so here's the thing. So I just want to make sure you guys understand. So, you know, obviously this is being held as just the most awesome thing. So... Okay, well, if you're a reptilian race, absolutely it is, because that means what your race does, you're doing again. If that's what you did in the beginning to get things started, then you got the angels trapped in the system that you needed to get a population going so you could get your scientists and everybody over the course of a world to build a big magnetic thing called CERN so you could open up a dimension so those locusts could flow out of that dimension. Well, then this is just a normal evolution of the whole deal, obviously. It's a no-brainer. So, yeah, I mean, good for them. They they, get, they, they got it going. So, anyway, <laughs> just, eh. anyway, it's very confusing, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to try and do the math. Anyway, oh, okay, somebody get the eraser and erase my brain. Anyway. So, let's go to Scooby-Doo. Now, now, that you're a now, I think it's fascinating that tonight of all nights, I wanna, I'm going to show you this Scooby-Doo thing. And this happened to become available that I can start putting up some shorties on this channel. And on this channel right here, I went over here and I, I clicked on this. Uh, yeah, sorry, I had a little bit of a glitch. Hopefully everything's all right. Yeah, it looks like it's all okay. Anyway, so it, it, it was very interesting. So I came over here, and then I, I clicked on something uh, on this channel right here. This is what I clicked on, Slideshow, Special Project Folder, just to see what I was dealing with. So I clicked on that, and as it began, I want to show you something. It's called, so here we go, let's see. Here we go, there we go. So let me enlarge that. Okay. I want you to look at what's on the screen. And I don't think, this is just the way the Lord does things in my world. Complete synchronicity impossible. Okay. So the plan was to come and show you a short little video tonight, which was a Scooby-Doo, right out of Scooby-Doo movie. The, the first Scooby-Doo movie, Spooky Island, everything I've shown you is in it. The, when they when they capture the souls, they hold people upside down. They literally breathe into their face and they go unconscious. And then they hold them upside down, and it's like they're drawing out, you know, they're drawing out their breath or putting their breath into them. That's a better way of saying. It. 
the so the creatures are putting the bre their breath into Fred and Thelma and everyone they're catching all the all the population on Spooky Island when they catch them they're putting their spirit breath into them okay and then you see Fred and everybody walking around but they're demonically possessed but they're you know, they're acting differently so anyway before this happens in the movie they go into the spooky castle and they stumble upon a training video in this spooky castle on spooky island i want to show you the training video that was the purpose tonight just to show you this little short clip show you where to go so you can get all the little shorties now and uh this was going to be the one i was kicking it off with scooby-doo the mystery of the bible <laughs> is in scooby-doo guaranteed okay let me show you what the first thing was that opened up <laughs> when i opened up susie's uh channel when i clicked on it it said one of them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the lord and their works are in the dark and they say who seeth us and who knoweth us surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay that's isaiah 29 15. now look right here is isaiah 57 verse 4 against whom do you sport yourselves against whom do you make a wide mouth and draw out your tongue are you not children of transgression a seed of falsehood okay that's that is the scripture that the lord gave me to show you when people go i have by the way just looking you right in the eye do you know how much i have that happen to me where i'm talking to someone they look right at me and they go because the spirit that's running them is in my presence knowing who I am. And that, let me tell you something. If you think that's not biblical, you haven't read your Bible. The Bible says the demons know your name. There's even a, a scripture where a guy tries to cast a demon out and he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, the one Paul speaks about. And the demon came out and took over the guy and took over the guy's body that he was trying to cast it out of and pummeled pummeled the guy that was trying to cast out the demon he said i know paul and i know who jesus is but i don't know you and then he got his ass whooped by a demonically possessed person because he didn't have that authority to cast that demon out if you don't have christ in you you're not going to be casting out any demons i guarantee it but if you have christ in you that's why the scripture says, I know who Paul is, and I know who Jesus is, but I don't know you, and the, the demon just pummels the guy. Okay, so when I am in the presence of people, and this happens a lot, I'm so glad Corey got to see, <laughs> I'm so glad Corey got to see so much. I look at Corey and go, I told you. People wink at me, they look at me and they go, it's one of the most bizarre things. That's Isaiah 57 verse 4. And the reason they do that is because the largest altar in the world is a dead sheep with his tongue sticking out. So that's why they do it. And it's in the Bible. It's in the Word. Why do people wink at you? Well, it's in the Bible. Let me show you who said it. Jesus said in John 15, 25, But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. So he, he's talking in John 15 about him and his father that I've come and I've done the works that no other man has done. And then if I had not done those works, they had, had not sinned. But now they have both hated me and the father. And this bringeth to pass what is written in their law that they hated me without cause. He was referring to Psalm 39, 15 right here. Look. Psalm 39, uh, this should have been written Psalm 39, 15. Let, let me double check that. But neither let them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye, look, that hate me without a cause. Okay, so let's just go to the Bible real quick because y'all know I'm only about the Bible and what the Word says. That's it. What the Word says is what goes. So let's go to John 15, and then we'll go to Psalm 15. 3519. Okay, so John 15. Here we go. 
and on this computer I pro yeah I do have it highlighted so here it is so Jesus is talking to them he has said if I had, I had not come and spoken unto them they had had not sin but now they have no cloak for their sin an outward showing that is a cloak a pretense a show okay how many times have I told you the host body is that cloak? That's what the uh, that's what the cloak is. Who's Lucifer? He's the anointed cherub that covereth the canopy that covers covers what the spiritual battle. Okay, now watch. If I had not come and spoken to them, they had had no sin. Now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no other man did, they had had not sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. Right there, John 15, 24. But then look right here what he says. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled which is written in their law. You know what, let me, let me enlarge this. Sorry about that. That is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Okay, here we go. Ready? He was speaking about Psalm 35, 19. I mean, unless I forgot my, my scriptures, but it should be 35, 19. I'm sorry, guys. One sec. Psalm 35, 19. I'll have to look at that image behind this in just a sec yep neither let them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me get it over me neither let them wink with the eye to pinch partially to bite the lips blink the eyes as a gesture of malice okay neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause so no matter what anyone says the bible says Neither let them wink the eye that hate me without a cause. I have a good friend of mine. I've grown. Um, I've known for a long time. When I used to be in, uh, hang around very dangerous people, he winks at me all the time, and he's the last guy you would really want to mess with. Yeah, he, I mean, yeah, he winks at me all the time. I still know him to this day. I still am friends with him. To, to a to to a degree we're cordial when i see him it's hey johnny hey hey i'll keep his name out of it but anyway he winks at me all the time and i noticed that once i got converted boy there was a huge difference in our relationship okay now ready this is what the short series is going to be about i'm going to take a biblical concept like i just did jesus said in john 15 and this bring it to pass what is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. And so he's talking about Psalm 35, 19, and it says, Neither let, let, let not them that are my enemies, my enemies, let's look, look at this, hating adversary, foe, I'm just going to click on the root of it, to hate, oh, as one of an opposite tribe. Oh my gosh. What? This is just gold right now. So, let's see. I, I got to walk this back, guys. This is pure gold. Just hit a home run right here. Let me let me just get this all highlighted. Okay, wink. Okay, so, wink right here. See the word wink? With the eye. So, I'm going to click on wink. It means to pinch. That is to blink. Oh, that's weird. How did it end up there? Okay, hang on, guys. <laughs> oh, here we go. Sorry, I got a little spun around. Let's do it again. Neither let them that are mine enemies right here, because I had I had a little bit of a a color issue. So I'm gonna recolor that. The word enemies. I'm gonna make it this bright blue. There it is. I'm going to make sure it's enlarged. Yep. Hang on one sec. Okay. The word enemies is three forty one. See it? Okay, I'm going to click on enemies, 341. It means hating an adversary, an enemy, a foe, 
right here. See it? Now, let's go to the root of the word right here, Hebrew word 340. Let me show you where it comes from. It means as one of an opposite tribe. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's just do some logic. What would that opposite tribe be? What's opposites? Angel and a demon. So who is the opposite tribe of Jesus? So if Jesus said, this bring it to pass what is written in their law, who's, who's they? Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord. They, they, you know, they, they carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. Who's that? Satan and his army from the pit, right? So here we have Psalm 35, 19. Neither let them not that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. The word enemies, it means a hating adversary as one of an opposite tribe. That is pure gold right there, guys. That is absolutely pure gold. So when someone's winking at you, Hey, Johnny, how you doing? Like Alex, right? That's how I knew Alex would draw a picture of me with a dead sheep. Well, that and the Holy Spirit confirmed that. When I spoke to uh, Chris in Starbucks, and I said, hey, I'll bet you a million bucks Alex draws a picture of me because the Holy Spirit was on me, and it was a prophetic thing. So the Holy Spirit knew that that would happen. And so I said, I'll bet you a million bucks because he was like, hey, Johnny, how you doing? Isn't it insane that the guy that was doing that drew a picture of me and he drew a dead sheep behind my ear? So what tribe was Alex from? We had to be the serpent race because we have the serpent race and the sheep race. That's what the whole Bible's about. The whole thing is the serpent race against the sheep race. Who's the devil? The serpent, the dragon. Who's, who's Jesus? The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Who's the whole fight against then? The lamb against the serpents. That's it. What do you think in ancient Egypt before they left, before they got to leave on Passover, what did they do? They put the blood of a spotless lamb on the doorpost and over the lintel. A lamb to free him from ancient Egypt. Who were those guys? Let me show you a picture of those. Guys. So let me just make my point using some images. So here's Tutankhamun right here where, with his headdress on, and here's a cobra. Do you notice a resemblance between the way the headdress is on a pharaoh and a cobra? Yeah, they're making the pharaoh look like a cobra, like a human snake. That was the point of making their headdresses like this. There's Yul Brynner and the Ten Commandments right here. Now, what was on these guys? On, their, on the headdresses. Let's see, there's a vulture and a serpent. So what does the vulture represent? Death. What about the serpent? The race that they are. The serpent race is death. There you go. Super easy, right? It's like a no-brainer. Well, let me show you a picture that makes it really clear. There's Joel Brenner in the Ten Commandments. Super great movie. I still love to watch it. And here we go. So now let me show you a little thing I put together to make the transition a little bit easier for your brain. So here is a serpent with its mouth open. And here is a part human, part serpent with its mouth open. And then here is Yul Brenner giving you the Yul Brenner stare and the Ten Commandments. There you go. So there is your serpent race of beings. Why do you think the Israelites were enslaved to the Egyptians for 400 years? Okay, then all you got to do is look around. Oh, wow, Iron Maiden has the same imagery, the same logo type stuff. You see the same outward manifestation. Iron Maiden World Slavery Tour. Huh, that's weird. Why would you do that? 
Let's look at their let's look at their t-shirt real quick. Huh, looks like the Ouroboros, doesn't it? World slavery tour again. Okay, now let's get back to Scooby Doo. I just wanted you to see that the Egyptian race is the one that manifests a human that's dressed to look like a serpent. Here it is. We're going to dress up. We're going to make our headdresses look like serpents. The king is going to have a serpent on his head and a vulture because that race of beings, their king is the king of death. The pit, the angel of the bottomless pit, that's their king. Now here's someone that's in our hemisphere that does the same thing, Lady Gaga. So Lady Gaga is walking around with a serpent on her dress. And if you don't believe that's a serpent, here is a clear plastic layover that I put on her dress. And if you don't think that's a serpent, then you probably don't belong at this channel. So now let's take it to the Bible. You ready? Let's take Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. And prove that Scooby-Doo Spooky Island they show you the mystery of everything, the whole thing that the Lord taught me in Scooby-Doo. Y'all ready? Let's do it. Here we go. Now, this is a really great scene. This is a really, 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 really funny scene. I, if you like Scooby-Doo, which I do, I love Scooby-Doo. Anyway, Scooby and Shag have a big fart contest. It's hysterical. And then... They're in the spooky castle, and Fred and Thelma stumble across this training video. Ready? Think serpent race, and neither let them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over, over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. And then remember, I told you, one of my very close associates in the life I used to lead before I got saved, he winks all the time, and he is definitely not a guy you would ever, ever, ever want to cross. Okay, here you go. Ready? Here we go. Now that you're a young adult, you'll need to learn societal do's and don'ts. Interaction between young people is polite and casual. Hey, sorry, bro. I will crush your bones into dust! Huh? Let's see how the situation should be handled. Remember, today's young people have a language all their own. Hey, sorry, bro. No big whoop, dog. Yo, would you catch that new vid on the box? True that. I'm up to stiz off on all popular trends. Word. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Did you just see it? Hey, Johnny, how you doing? So what he's really saying is, I want to kill you. I, this guy says, I will crush your bones into dust. And he crushes his glass. That's what he's really thinking. Now, can you imagine being around an entire population that that is actually real? Okay, welcome to the real world. Do you know the stuff I've, I've dealt with? There's so much stuff that literally intersects this video to a point that would make your head spin. The other race of beings in my world is so in my face sometimes that maybe y'all wouldn't even believe it if you hung out with me. I'm again, I'm glad Corey got to experience what I, what I see in a, in a weekly basis. Sometimes it's not every day, but it's, it's constant. I get it all the time from people. I know even from people I I've worked in construction with, People I see at the coffee shop, different folks when I see them out. Hey, Johnny. They wink their eye at me. 
Sometimes they'll be talking to me and they'll just go. They'll bite down on their tongues. Because the spirit that's running them. Watch. Let's watch it one more time. Oh, shit. Oh, I was like, no, no. I thought maybe the, I thought maybe the whole volume was off the entire time. I was like, oh, no. Here we go. Let's watch this one more time. Let's just watch the act of the wink. And then we'll watch the whole thing again. Word. So, what's his real intention towards the other guy? He wants to kill him. Have y'all seen what's going on down in Australia? Y'all seen what's going... Did you hear what Trudeau said in, in Canada? He said, now that things are where they're at, and I don't want to get into too much of their nomenclature for obvious reasons, he said, we have to decide whether or not the people that don't want this, if we even want them anymore as our citizens. Well, if you don't want them as your citizens, what are you going to do with them? Well, let's watch the video one more time. Maybe we'll get some insight. Here we go. Let's do it again. Okay, let's go. Now that you're a young adult, you'll need to learn societal do's and don'ts. Interaction between young people is polite and casual. Hey, sorry, bro. I will crush your bones into dust! Let's see how the situation should be handled. Remember, today's young people have a language all their own. Hey, sorry, bro. No big whoop, dog. Yo, would you catch that new vid on the box? True that. I'm up to stiznoff on all popular trends. Word. That's the Bible right there. Just like Homer Simpson, when one eye went up, one eye went down. When Lisa released the dragon, the poor little angel will be killed. One eye goes up, one eye, that's, that's what death is. One eye up, one eye down, that's what death is. Separation from the Lord God, where you have both eyes up. Why do you think the Bible says, if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light, because light is up, watch. Oh, your whole body's full of light. You got two ups. Well, if you have one up, one down, your whole body's not full of light, is it? It's full of one and then it's opposite. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so mind-blowing. Like, where are we? <laughs> and it's just nuts. So anyway, uh, uh, let me get a visual. Anyway, I'm excited, guys. I can't. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the short series now. And I'm going to, I'll put a link to the channel. This is going to go on, the, obviously, the channel that you're used to going to. But I'm going to start plugging that short channel with all kinds of short little scripture videos. Like Genesis 1 and Genesis 1 and 2 and 3. And I'll tie everything together because now I own it. The Lord has made me just so fluent in their language and in his language, understanding the, the word. So... Now I can tie it all together very easily. It's all glory to God. All glory to God. And thank you, everybody, guys, everyone that stepped up to help with the, the thing at the ark. Easier. All right. So now I'm just going to inundate you. I'm just going to overflow. Y'all are going to be going like, ah. My God, this is Johnny's world. <laughs> Hopefully, everybody will be okay. Yeah, I was talking to um, someone, one of the people that helped today, and he said, how are you doing? I thought about it for a second. I said, you know, I'm glad I haven't lost my mind because the level of this stuff, it's everywhere. It's in everything. The Bible. The Bible is so woven into the fabric 
of society and what you see and how they use the Bible to mock us, it is unbelievable. You just saw it right there. That's Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So I'm going to load this one up right now. And then I think I'm going to try a little shorty on the other channel and get it going. Yeah. All right. And I love you guys in Christ. And thank you so much. I'm just, I'm so grateful that I got to do this for you guys. And yeah, it was by far the hardest thing I've ever done. And I've done some hard stuff in my life. Very difficult stuff. And uh, this was, yeah, it just took some serious, serious perseverance is what it took. But anyway, now I know that I've reached the point where I, the information lives in me. The truth lives in me in such a way that I can cross-reference now and, and just bring all these other scriptures. And by the way, I want to encourage you on the new channel um, please feel free to drop the scriptures you want to share, drop the stuff you want to show. Do not come and teach. Please never come and act like you're a teacher. Don't ever do that. But please feel free to share. There's a difference. A lot of people try and come with the authority of a teacher. And if I see that, you'll be gone instantly. Teachers are should be very few and far between. And you are you're not a teacher unless the Lord God appoints you as a teacher. That's why the Bible says not many should become teachers. Because when you do, you take on a burden that is unbelievable. And the Lord appoints you. Uh, you don't appoint yourself. And I see too many people doing that. So anyway, the new channel, share videos. You know, hey, check out this video. Or, oh, I saw what you're talking about in this. and Or check out this scripture, you know, and post whatever you want. And then I'll look at it because when I get to see some scriptures that you guys post, I get I get to glean some really good stuff that I may not have seen and looked at. And I've seen a couple people that leave comments and I've used some of the scriptures that they'll put up. And even though some of the stuff they'll put up uh, may not be the exact uh, thing that I show you guys, it still gets me there, if that makes sense. Uh, someone posted Ezra. And I'll tell you what, when I went to Ezra 9 and 10, I was like, oh my gosh, if this isn't the Lord's people breeding with the other race, I don't know what it is. But see, you had to look at it in terms of angels and demons. That's it. Because if you didn't see it in a reverse engineered kind of way, you would never understand it. So the Lord literally had me reverse engineer it. So anyway. The end's coming, guys. And the end is the beginning for us. So, all right. I'm going to load this one up. Here we go. One more time. One more training video. Let's watch it one more time. Think about what you're watching. Just think about it. Okay, here we go. Oh, I noticed on the clock when the guy winks, there's an eight-pointed star. The clock is an eight-pointed star, which is the star of Lucifer. Okay, here we go. Now that you're a young adult, you'll need to learn societal do's and don'ts. Interaction between young people is polite and casual. Hey, sorry, bro. Right here, eight, eight points, Star of Lucifer. I will crush your bones into dust! Huh? Let's see how the situation should be handled. Remember, today's young people have a language all their own. Sorry, bro. No big whoop, dog. Yo, would you catch that new vid on the box? True that. I'm up to stiz off on all popular trends. Word. There it is. It shows you that they actually are acting actors. Just think about Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Annie McKay, Peter Strzok. 
James Comey, what, what a, these people are just, they're liars. If they're liars, what does that make them? Children of the devil. The Bible says Satan is the father of lies and the father of it. So if you've never repented completely of your lying, you're a child of the devil. Then that's common. Children of the devil, they're easy to spot. They lie all the time. And so if you're a liar, like Hillary Clinton, James Comey, Peter Strzok, you know, all these people that have been caught lying in front of Congress and still haven't been prosecuted yet, why not? They're children of the devil. What about this whole Russian collusion thing that was all made up, lied, lies? It's it's all over. It's all over the world. Everybody knows it was a a setup. Isn't that treason? I mean, wouldn't that be treason if you lied to try to unseat a president? Wouldn't that be treason? Isn't it weird they're trying to call the January sixth thing? What they're doing, it's really bizarre, right? It's like accusing your adversary of what you, you're you already guilty of, right? Isn't that fascinating? Oh, the Bible says, in the end, woe unto them who call good evil and evil good. The Bible says, in the end, those that kill you will think they do with God a service. So we know what's coming, don't we? All right, guys. All right, let's load this one up. I'll keep this short. <laughs> short it's 41 minutes okay but this wasn't a shorty this was a trainer this was a training video okay anyway i'm gonna start working on some shorties i love you guys okay here we go